Washington, and uh, I serve as a Prevention Programs Manager at Aid Atlanta. And uh, I'm responsible for the oversight of three gay men's prevention programs. And I'd like to call in the room the name of the men that I'm blessed to work with, some of the most dedicated gay men in the field. Uh, Clinton, Dwayne, Larry, Lance, Marquise, and Rig. Uh, they are masters of improvisation and adaptation because they've often had to adjust their programs and the scope to fit the needs of their folks, their members, uh, for which they may not have been funded. And they are not alone. So that's one of the reasons why we're here today to publicly challenge the CDC, our partners, yes, uh, to act with more urgency, more than ever before. More urgent national, regional, and local action. We need them to pay attention, as my sister Cheryl said. Action in the South to meet the needs of gay men of all races, black women, transgender individuals, people who use injection drugs, undocumented individuals. We need the CDC to act with more innovation, more depth, and more precision. We need you to enhance your leadership in HIV and STD prevention. And to that end, we demand that the CDC provide more training and resources to equip communities across the nation and here in Atlanta, not only in Midtown, but in West End, the Bluff, South DeKalb, mm -hmm. and the rural areas Long of the time. South. We need you, the CDC, to collaborate with institutions like the Department of Labor, Department of Justice, criminal justice systems, to not only increase testing and linkage to care, but also to provide job training to ensure housing regardless of HIV status, right? To ensure that there are humane policies and services for our incarcerated sisters and brothers, expanded access to health care and resources and education in states like Georgia where the governors refuse to expand Medicaid. We've got these great new tools, and some old tools like condoms, um, antiviral drugs, PrEP, but those tools won't work unless we address and fix the structures in which people live their lives. As our HIV services become more mainstream, we need the CDC to ensure that the expertise needed to adequately serve our folks is also mainstream. An expansive training effort is needed to prepare general practitioners to be able to engage our folks, those most marginalized as dignified individuals, as resilient communities uh, with the competence, the quality of service, and the dignity that they deserve. We need greater investment, not only in HIV, traditional HIV programs, but also the smaller community groups, faith-based organizations, writers, artists, filmmakers, who can reach folks that may not come to a testing clinic or attend your prevention workshop series. We need support for broader ownership of this epidemic. When it comes to gay men, the campaigns we develop must address more fundamental issues. It's great, as a colleague of mine said, you know, to talk about and hold up, uh, testing makes us stronger, but what about jobs? Jobs makes us stronger. Mm -hmm. Housing makes us stronger. Yeah. Education. Learning about Joseph Bean, Marlon Riggs, Exus Hemphill makes us stronger. Pride and faith help us overcome, help us overcome. We have to engage generations of gay, black gay men, not those over 40 and those under 30. We need to say more to them than get tested and use a condom. Diversified messages and images that speak in the real language and context in which gay men live their lives. And lest we need, we demand a comprehensive initiative to at long last address the needs of transgender individuals. More research to generate the data that drives the dollars. Trans-specific prevention and care services, enlistment of trans professionals, in the fields of research, policy, and practice. I stand before you leaders as a black gay man who's been HIV positive for more than 28 years and has witnessed the strides that the CDC has made. And I'm here to say that they needed to do it better, quicker, with more depth and more precision than ever before. We all of us have our part as leaders and be willing to challenge ourselves as we challenge the CDC, but we don't have any time. No more opportunities or lives to waste. More than ever, this is our time to act up, act strong, act now. Love and courage to you, leaders. Thank you. Gay men are the only population that are tasked and held to this standard of 100% condom adherence. No other population is, 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 is held to that standard. There's an over-reliance on behavioral interventions. Um, when we look at the disparities between black gay men and white gay men, as an example, we don't see black gay men having reported or heightened any evidence of 
more, uh, say, condomless anal sex, as an example. But we do see more seroprevalence in the communities. Um, there are correlations with those structural factors, um, whether that's um, you know, uh, less access to health care and education, um, as well as, the, the, again, the heightened prevalence in our communities, where we live, work, and play. Um, as well as the associations with uh, just basic conditions, housing, um, uh, uh, incarceration. Uh, and so longitudinal study after longitudinal study bears this out, that there are structural factors as well. And so we can't just rely on behavior and interventions and teach, teach gay men or encourage gay men to use condoms more um, regularly. Yeah, I